constant Z finishing has now gained a new undercut option. This means that we can directly machine undercut regions as long as the current tool geometry or tool axis permits access to those undercut regions. This will be a big benefit to both 3 and 5 axis users who want to cut steep walled sections that may contain undercut regions. Let's open a project and take a look at the new undercut constant Z option. In the example part we can clearly see the overhanging regions on the four side walls. If we switch on the undercut shading it will show us exactly where the undercuts are. And we can also use the dynamic sectioning to view the undercuts. So we're going to dynamic section along the y-axis, sorry the x-axis. And there we can see the undercuts very clearly. If we draw the tool that we want to use to cut the part, it is physically possible to use this type of tool, this lollipop type tool, in three axes to machine completely the undercut regions of this part. But if we have a look at uh, the constant Z toolpath from panel 10, we can see that if we undraw the part, the panel 10 toolpath has obviously ignored the undercut regions because it can only machine what it can see from above. So all those undercut regions are recorded uh, by the overhang. If we now draw exactly the same toolpath in panel 11 with the undercut option switched on, we can see clearly that the tool has gone right down underneath the undercut and machined to the bottom of the part. Now let's take a look at how we actually switch on the undercut option on the constant Z finishing form itself. So if we go to the settings, there is simply a tick box to deactivate or activate the undercut machining. Now there is a limitation when using the undercut option and that is the tool must either be a tip disc tool or a tool that has a spherical tip such as a ball nose tool or a tapered ball nose tool. And obviously to machine the undercut region we must choose a suitable tool axis and tool combination that allows access to those regions. OK, we've just discussed an example of using a lollipop type cutter using a vertical three axis machining to machine the undercuts. Now we're going to look at a view mill simulation of a standard ball nose machining using a five axis lead and lean technique to machine the undercuts. So first of all I'm going to rotate the view, rotate the view slightly so we get a good uh, clear access to the undercut being machined. And then I'm going to load in a pre-roughed block into the view mill simulation. Next we're going to load in a constant Z toolpath that was created with a lean angle of 40 degrees. Uh, first of all with the undercut option switched off. So if we simulate that from the start, we can see the lean there of the tool. If we just pause that simulation and just switch off the tool and run the simulation again so it goes through a little bit quicker. So this is with the undercut option switched off and as we can see when the ball nose tool gets to the very outer edge of the overhang it then continues on vertically down from that position. 
because without the undercut option, constant Z machining can only machine what it can physically see from above. OK, now let's activate exactly the same toolpath with exactly the same parameters, except for now the undercut is switched on. And let's simulate that toolpath from the start. Again, we'll switch the tool off so it goes a little bit quicker. So, okay, in the beginning, uh, before we get to the undercut region, there's uh, no material be being removed. As soon as we get to the horizon line of the overhang, you should see the tool start to go back in underneath the overhang and cut the material left by the previous tool. And here we can see clearly the material being removed. So to summarise, this new undercut option will be a big benefit to all users, not only 3-axis users who have just vertical machining centres and want to use a lollipop cutter to get into overhanging regions, but also 5-axis users who want to cut steep side walls with the tool tilted over at an angle. It will also eliminate the need to use the old workaround of creating a pattern machining toolpath with a constant Z toolpath as the input and reprojecting that constant Z toolpath back underneath any overhangs.